Thank you very much. All right, yes, welcome to the world's only offshore video game resort. I've just been up to the helipad to coax the latest load of campers from my chopper. They're trickling down the gantry as I speak. So far be it for me to keep them waiting. I'll hand you over to the capable loins of the Games Master. Greetings and welcome to the Games Rig. How splendid of you to have braved the rough seas to join me out here on the rig. I do so appreciate your company on these long winter nights. To tee us off and remind us of sunnier times, I thought we might take to these fairways and putting greens of that most realistic of golf simulations, Palm Springs Open. I'd like you to complete the first three holes of the back nine in level par. Best of luck. And remember, never up, never in. And hoping for a bunker-free experience on this challenge is Aidan Smith from Leidenstow. <laughs> Now, Aidan, this may look like a very pretty golf game, but it's fiendishly tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very difficult, but I'm hoping for a fine day and some good weather, and I think, you know, we've got a chance. Any particular holes that are tougher than the others? The second hole's got a lot of water in it, and I don't really want to be, be in there. OK, well, let's hope you avoid it tonight. If you'd like to sit yourself down in the chair, we'll get ready to tee off. And joining me in the bunker tonight is Games Master's very own Stephen Carsey. Now, Stephen, you're a bit of a whiz games player yourself. Have you got any tips for Aidan? Well, Dominic, having watched the course earlier, I would say certainly the first hole is probably the easiest. So he really needs to par it or perhaps even birdie it if he's going to be uh, successful tonight. OK, then. Aidan, are you ready? Yes. Then tee off. Aidan is on the map now. It's a 415-yard <laughs> par four. And here we are. You can see him positioning the cursor. Okay, that flag is the hole, so he's That's just got the, the left of it to avoid the water. Now, what's he going to do? He's going to swing across here. He avoided the hook. And he's got on full power. 100%, the bars go across. It's a slight hook on this. Yeah, slight hook. Let's see where it lands. It's good. Just one shot. Slightly in the rough, I think. Or, no, it's not. No, it's on the fairway, don't they? Aiming for the green now. That's right, he's passed away. I think he may be left a bit short here, Steve, to tell you the okay. truth. The bar will swing across here. Oh, lovely, lovely little shuffle there. Very nice. It will swing across and we have to hit it dead central to avoid a hook or a slice. Oh, it's just slightly in the middle. Here we go. 100% shot. Yep, nice full power shot. And here it goes. Off it goes into the horizon. Slight hook here. Oh, no. Oh. Well, he's oh. very upset with that shot. He's disgusted with that shot. There it goes. He's just setting up. Oh, that's Perfect. good. Perfect. That's good. A little bit short. It's going to just dimp up a little bit. Oh, this it's, looks good, no, Steve. No, it's going to run on. It's going to run onto the hole. Let's just see. Oh, well, that's a very good shot. Very good shot from difficult conditions. So we must remember the challenge is three holes in par or less. Okay, here he goes. They're very, very tough, these greens here. It's got nice power on that. Yeah, nice swing. It's nice. It's going there. Oh, my God, we see the hole. Where's the ball? Go is it going to go? Is it going to go? go? Oh! So unlucky, Dominic. So unlucky. Here he goes. Knocks it. Yeah. And it's in for one of the par. Aiden. Okay, so at the end of the first hole, Aiden is at one over par. He's got two holes left with which to make it up. But the problem is now he has to get one of these holes under par, and this hole coming up is probably the trickiest. And here he goes. Yep, slice, yeah. slice. But he's got to get it full power. That's it, full yeah. power. He can make this one. As long as the wind doesn't carry it into the water, Dominic, this should be a good shot. And oh! He okay. missed the water, but he's in the bunker. That's safe, though. He hasn't dropped a shot, at least. I mean, he really has to birdie the third shot if he can get this in. That's, that looks very nice indeed. Yeah. That's a tasty shot. It could run on. These greens are very fast, Dominic. Oh, he could run a bit over then. It was certainly well struck. Yeah. Oh, it's... Yeah. See. Yeah. That was all right. He's got to get the power right, though. He really has to sink it, though. He can't afford to miss this. Oh, he's got a fair bit of power there. Oh, I don't think it's enough. And it's rolling down. Come on, come on, come ball. On. Come on, go, go, go. And no, no it didn't have their legs. Back, Just to reiterate, if he sinks this, he goes two over par. So he's got to make up two strokes on the final hole, which is near impossible. But let's concentrate on this putt just now. Again, feel it one feet away. Just wants to, to dink this a little bit. I think that's good. Here it comes. Yes. And it's in there. Yeah. 
Okay, so here we go to the final hole. This is going to take some staggering golf play to take this so, on the park. To get an eagle on this third hole, I think, I think we're talking impossible, to be honest, Dominic. I think we are. I hope he's, I hope he's on his driver here. Oh no, he sliced it. Oh dear, oh dear. He's got a full power, but I think this is going to be all way to the right. Oh no, this could be over the trees. And it is over the trees in the rough. We can just see in the centre of the screen the flag there for the hole. He's going a little bit wide of it, trying to obviously just get a little better angle on it to scoop it over the trees. I hope he knows what he's doing. He sliced it a bit, it, yeah. and this is his final shot. He's got to hold it in this. Oh! Oh, no, it oh, hits the tree, no. and unfortunately, Aiden has used all his strokes, and his challenge tonight is over. <laughs> now, bad luck, Aiden. Um, really, from the first hole, you needed to part it. You were one over, and you were carrying that really for the rest of the game, weren't you? Yeah, I think I was a bit unlucky with the first one, and, and then after that, I got a bit of wind, and uh, the direction didn't go right, so. Uh, that's right, the, the, the greens didn't run for you on this yeah, game, yeah, it, did wasn't, they? it wasn't too good. Oh, well, you had to get a good round anyway, okay? Unfortunately, no prize to offer you, but we hope you've enjoyed your time on Games Master. I have, I have indeed. Okay, let's have a round of applause again for our gallant loser, Aidan Smith! <laughs> our three reviewers have flown out desperate for some offshore ecstasy. Will they find it? Let's check out this week's offerings. <laughs> This week it's twanging jockstraps ahoy as we look at sports games. First up on the Mega Drive, picks can fun with inside slots and tight ends in John Madden 93. The teams have all been updated, all the stats are as new as they can be and they've also included a lot of old sides which are classics. Taken on its own, then it's certainly an exceptional game, yeah, but as a sequel there really isn't enough new to it. If you've got John Madden football or John Madden 92, don't bother about this, because it's just cosmetic changes. If you haven't got either of these, it's a great entry into the world of American football. Next up on the Super NES, enjoy a firm backhand stroke with David Crane's amazing tennis. There's the huge sprites that are really well animated, and it all moves very smoothly indeed. But it does take a while to get into. Very fast, very slick. Not that playable. If you're at the far end of the court, you've got no chance. Don't get this if you've already got Super Tennis. If you haven't, it's a sound buy. 15, love. Finally, on the Amiga, even Auntie Marisha gets the chance to score with Sensible Soccer version 1.1. Definitely one of the best. It's very fluid to control, it's easy to get the hang of. Sensible Soccer 1.1 is a great improvement. It's better than kickoff. it's better than Sensible Soccer of course, it's better than Striker, it's the best football game you can get. There are new teams, improved goalies, more cups to win, and the controversial back pass rule. My verdict, the best game on the Amiga. Owners of the original Sensible Soccer can upgrade to version 1.1 for the measly sum of £4.95. Send your disc one plus a cheque or post order to Sensible Soccer offer at this address. Gaming gurus have been soiling themselves with anticipation for the last two months. Well, it finally happened, we got Showleaf to set up Games Master Live. A heaving, sweating mass of 75,000 fanatics flocked to the NEC in Birmingham last weekend for this three-day video gaming orgy. Revelers went haywire on a riot of free arcade game spectaculars. They glutted themselves on virtual reality escapades, positively violated themselves on state-of-the-art laser beam shootouts, prostrated themselves at the latest movie tie-ins, and totally fried their brains on the very latest games soon to hit the market. Amongst all of this, of course, there were some old crowd pleasers. All in all, enough hardware and software to satisfy the most sordid of video game fantasies. Literally everyone was queuing up to stock up. This poor chap was even searching for a skincare counter. But what the crowds were really thronging to see was the Games Master himself, complete with games like mock-up and some bloke in a silly red jacket. Fans clamoured to take part, but at the end of a very special day, some of them just couldn't make the grade. They don't stand a chance. They don't stand a chance. Does anybody else think Jay's going to win? Or do we think Jay's a bit of a tube? 
publicity feature this week. Well, I've just been down to the cabins to check that our celebrity's been kept in the manner to which he's accustomed. So let's waste no further time and find out what challenge he'll be facing. Back so soon? Perhaps my next challenge will curb your appetite. And um, talking of curbs, I thought a spot of high-speed curb crawling might tickle your fancy. Lotus 3 is the game, and you have just 90 seconds to complete the particular level I've set aside. As if that wasn't enough, I also littered the course with roadworks. So um, don't forget to um, clink, click and burn rubber, as I believe you young things say. And for this challenge, we're lucky enough to have Lotus's Formula One Grand Prix number one driver. Please give a warm welcome to the future of British motor racing, Johnny Herbert! <laughs> When you're in the pit stops, do you ever get the chance to play a game or two? Yeah, I've got a, a game gear and I have a, a spot of golf while I'm waiting for the tires to be changed. Okay, now you're so good at the real thing. We haven't even given you a practice on this. We've just shown you the controls. How confident do you feel? Uh, not at all, really. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be quite difficult, uh, but I'll enjoy it. Okay, then. If you at all want to find out if Johnny gets a checkered flag or a twisted suspension, join us after the break. <laughs> to Games Master. Tonight's special guest, the young gun of Formula One, Johnny Herbert, is about to play Lotus 3. Joining me in the commentary box is Tom Watson from Renegade. Welcome, Tom. Good evening, Dominic. Uh, have you got any tips for Johnny? Well, I think the thing he's got to do is keep clear of the roadworks. Plenty of them on this section, lots of obstacles. Okay, then. Johnny, are you ready? Yep. Johnny has one and a half minutes to complete the race, and his time starts now. And off Johnny goes. Okay, well, the car's got a five-speed manual box, and Johnny's really got to be careful, especially if he bumps into something, to change down so he can keep the rev. Right, all these roadblock signs, they'll actually slow him down. They're slowing him down, as you can see. They're just knocking him off. He's taking a little bit of grass on the right-hand side there. Um, he's heading towards the first checkpoint. Okay, he's had, uh, he's had 24 seconds. He wants to be hitting this checkpoint at about 30 seconds. That's right. I think he's going to be a bit behind here, Tom. Well, he's at about 170 kil kilometers an hour at the moment. Uh, the Alain on this model will go up to over 200, so he's not quite performing at this He's level. slipping there, there. he's going to checkpoint in 38 seconds. He's eight seconds behind. It's going to be very difficult for him to make this up now, Tom. Well, I think Johnny's been, you know, sort of been confident. That he can perform in this car, he's got one himself, I, th I think he can make it all the way. Okay then, here goes Johnny, he has had 55 seconds here, he's got 5 seconds to make this other checkpoint, he's still going to be a little bit behind, perhaps he can pick, oh he's picked up quite a lot of time there, he's back on schedule, he's had 1 minute and he's hit the second checkpoint, brilliant second stage by Johnny there. Tom. Well he was really keeping clear of the traffic, I mean he just had a little bit of a contretemps there with a white vehicle, but um, that's really what's helped him make that time up Dominic. Okay Johnny's got 16 seconds left, this is going to be very very close, he's had a brilliant second half of the race. Everybody here is rooting for him. He's coming down. He's got around the 10 left seconds left through here. the bridge, under the second bridge. The Come checkpoint on, Johnny, isn't he's far getting away. To it. He's getting very, very close. We've got four, three, two, one, and oh, not Johnny is quite, just out of time quite. now. And, and there, there it comes was. The there it was. Line, over the finishing line. Three seconds over time, but it's still a brilliant performance by Johnny Herbert. Johnny. Johnny, that was desperately close. Where did you lose those three seconds? Uh, well, the first uh, section, I had a few uh, wheel-banging uh, sessions with a couple of other cars. Um, and I Aaron good... Senna wasn't even there either? No, he wasn't, no. So <laughs> it must have been someone else, obviously. So. <laughs> oh, right. Well, bad luck, but you provided us with a brilliant challenge tonight. Another round of applause for our special guest, Johnny Herbert! <laughs> And while we recover from that sterling but ultimately unsuccessful effort, it's time to go over to everybody's favourite agony uncle in the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. A welcome to the fount of game-playing wisdom. What can I do for you? 
I'm having trouble with Bart Simpson and Escape from Camp Devley on the Game Boy. I can't get past the end of level Guardian on level one. Can you help me, please? You really do have problems, don't you? The fact that the Guardian is called Blindside Bill is all important, for he can only be killed from his blind side. Simply bounce over him and bash him from behind. This advice applies to every end-of-level boss in the entire game. Thanks a lot. Yes, yes. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. I've heard there's a secret room on level 2-1 of Asterix on the Mars system. Could you tell me where it is? Heed this advice, young scamp. Simply stand on the closest platform before it flips and push right as you fall. You should hit the wall and fall into a room full of goodies. Thanks. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. What's your query? On another word, I just can't get past the beast at the beginning. What should I be doing? As soon as the beast jumps down, turn left and run like the clappers. When you reach the cliff, jump onto the vine, and you will automatically swing past the beast and land behind him. Start sprinting back to the right, and you will come across some surprising saviors. Great, thanks. That's all for this particular bash of heart to hearts. Hmm. I'm afraid it looks as if we might be in for a very stormy ride. Good all. Bye for the moment. Now it's time for our final challenge. But instead of going over to Games Master, we've got something special planned. For tonight, sees the first in our special magazine challenge. We asked four multi-format magazines, each to name their champion on Street Fighter II. We'll have a semi-final this week and the next, culminating in our grand final in two weeks' time. So, for the first semi-final, please welcome Paul Lakin from GameZone and Duncan McDonald from Zero. <laughs> Paul, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Paul, how much time do you spend a day actually writing the magazine and how much time do you spend playing games? I, if I told you the truth, I'd probably lose my job, but let's say six hours a day playing the games, about six hours a day writing about them. All right, so it's quite a long day then. It's a long day, very long day. Okay, now, Paul, what character have you chosen tonight and why? I've chosen the rubbery Indian guy. Dal um, Sim. Dal Sim, yep. because basically he's a stretchy sort of geezer, so I can cower in the corner and hit Duncan without him getting anywhere near me. Oh. Right, let's move on to Duncan now. Who have you chosen, Duncan? Well, I've gone for Chun Li, the only chick in the game. Oh yeah, and why have you chosen her? Well, be non-sexist, I'll choose the chick, and she's quick. So uh -huh. I mean, if he's stretching around all over the place, I can zap in, get a few blows, zap out, you know, moving okay. quick, moving uh, out quick. Are you the favourite tonight, Duncan? Do you think? I think so. Yeah. All right then. If you'd like to take your games playing positions, we'll get ready to start. And helping me out on this challenge is one of the true experts from Nintendo Hotline, Keith Pullen. Welcome, Keith. Thanks, Dominic. Now, Keith, we've got Dalsim against Chun Li. What can we expect to see from these two characters? Um, it's a curious fight, actually. Um, Chun Li will be attacking from the air, I would have thought, so Dalsim's got to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. um, if he can pick her off with a few long range moves, then should be a good fight. Okay, then. Are our two competitors ready? Yep. yep. Then off you go. Okay, Paul is Dalsim on the left hand side of the screen. Duncan is Chun Li or Chun Lai. Okay, there's that aerial attack we were talking about. On the right, that's right. Now you okay, can see. Okay, Dalton's got to go for some long moves here. That's Trying right. Chun Li's getting, Chun getting, Lai's in getting the inside there, which is. Okay, at the top top of the screen, you can see the energy bars. When it's all full of red, when all the yellow goes down, they are history. Dalton's down to about halfway at the moment. There goes the um, well and kick there by Chun Lai. It's a good oh, move. Oh, very powerful. torpedo headbutt there from Dalton. It didn't quite come off. That's more of a short range move. Then. Low on energy now, Dalton. He's got to be careful. This oh is no, and Dalton's gone. First blood to Chun Li. Okay, now we go on to the second leg. It is the best of three, so it's first blood. Okay, flying to dunking there by Chun Li. Some good punches there. Fighting back by Dalsim. Oh, yoga fire! Lovely little special move there. He's perfected that technique on the Dalsim's jumping. Oh, well, when kick there from Chun Li or Chun Li. He's leaping about all over the place here. Another yoga Another fire yoga missing fire. though. It does leave him a bit vulnerable to attack once it's skewed that, I think. Though. It does. He's, um, it takes about two seconds to recover, so he's got to be careful. OK, on the energy bars, Dalsim's going down again there, That's but he's a got move. a little bit from Chun Lai. We're down both. Dalsim's a little bit further down the energy bar there. OK, they don't want to get in each other. They've been a bit tenacious Staying here. Staying away. Dalsim coming oh, in. Oh, lovely timing there from Chun Lai, but Dalsim got one back. 
It's very close. Oh, it's a lovely punch, long stretch there. punch. Oh, oh that's nice jumping out. Good she maneuver got out there. That well. Oh, lovely spinning torpedo head, but they're from oh, Chun Lai from there. Dalson. Chun Lai's. Oh, they're still neck right. and neck here on the second one. Is... Dalson has to win this to have a chance. Right and the time. time is up, and Dalson wins because he had the most energy left at the end of the time. So we go into the third bout. It's one each. Decider here. Difficult to say who's going to win. This has been a very, very close fight, this one, Keith. Certainly, um, as I said, it was quite close. Okay, oh, this is... Uh, chun has got to get in close here, doesn't she? I mean, he's got such a... Yeah, no oh, with that well, when kick, kick just caught him. That was a lovely piece of special move action there. But Dalson really needs to try and keep away here and go for the long moves. Oh, no. Oh, oh it's good very throw. good in close for those throws, Dalson. chun energy is down. She's got to be careful here, Keith. She's... chun -Li, oh, no, another oh. throw there. She's down very low. This could be it. She's got to Dalson. watch one more hit, really, and chun -Li's history. She's got to watch. Oh, she's oh, coming back there nicely. There. Dalson's down. Oh, oh she's with a punch there. Oh, no, chun -Li's thrown up. Ah, the has been thrown. chun -Li is out of it. Dalson is the winner. Good win. Surprised that one. Good. Let's, let's go to you first, Duncan. Brilliant start. You took the first bout, no problem at all. Then things started to go wrong. What happened? Uh, well, there's lots of excuses, I suppose. I could say my thumb hurts. Um, <laughs> I could say I let him win. I normally do say that. <laughs> but I, all I can say is I feel quite good about it because yesterday I took 20 quid off him at Sensible Soccer. So <laughs> that'll have to do. Well, that's some comfort there. Yeah. All right, now, Paul, brilliant comeback there. What were some of the special tactics you used? Running away as much as possible. It always right. helps. <laughs> and you got that grab, that grab was working I quite often. I began to get that sussed. I mean, I wasn't in the first match, I wasn't really making the right yeah. moves and everything, and then I began to get it sussed in the second two games. Okay, well, we see you in two weeks for our final, but it's a uh, goodbye to you for now, Duncan, but thank you very much anyway. Let's have another round of applause for tonight's semi finalists, Paul Lakin and Duncan McDonald. <laughs> So Paul Lakin will be returning in two weeks for the grand final. Be sure to join us next week for our second semi-final featuring challengers from Min Machines and CNVG.